Aries. Welcome to July. Okay, things are going to get very intense. They've been intense, but just more generally emotional, but now things are intense with a purpose. So starting off with love, there is some very fiery energy coming in with Venus moving into Leo on the 11th of July. That's going to be in your fifth house if you are in Aries rising. Whatever you've been going through, it's time to put it down. You are back outside. You are also the Ace of Wands. You're on fire. You're feeling, let's say, the temporal nature of life. Very close right now. Time is ticking. We don't have a lot of it. You're flirting. You're smiling for no reason. You're walking around smiling to yourself like you're already in love, even if you're single. And we know that that's exactly how one attracts what one wants. It's a time of great luck. Think about it. The sun will move into a fire sign, into Leo on the 22nd. And it will meet Venus there. So for you, this is a sort of radiance that emanates from you now. Things have been intense. Things have been bringing you out. And you may have felt like you needed to be a saint and <laughs> just not react to what was happening because you couldn't somehow tide. And here, because you have been patient, because there was nothing really you could do and you gave into that, that's the really beneficial thing about being instinctual, is if you're not supposed to do something, you just won't feel like it. I wouldn't say it makes your life easier, but it does make you a lot more successful than most people. So, just to touch on this a little bit, today, once again, um, some younger family members were very interested to learn that I don't have an inner dialogue. And the more we talked about that, the more I realized that the conversation we were really having was about doing. Because what kept coming up as a question was, well, what is going on in your head before you do something? And it took me a minute to explain that generally while I'm in the midst of doing something, I don't actually know why I'm doing it. It's only once I've done it that it makes sense in a much larger jigsaw puzzle that I can't see. And it feels like only certain, sorry, I have like a little hair. It's irritating me. I only have a view of certain parts of the puzzle at a time but a, but even that view even that perspective I gain after the action is taken so if you were to ask me well why did you do this and this and this or the other way is oh now I understand why you did this and this and this because here we are at the end and everything you did seems deliberate no none of that was deliberate I and mean, sometimes I wish it I could just take credit for it and be like, oh yeah, I totally thought that through. That was my master plan. No. And that sounds, even to hear myself say it back, it sounds like you're living by, you know, flying by the seat of your pants here and you're living right on that razor's edge. But that is, you know, for those of you who are new, I have heavy um, Aries influence in my chart. My Mars, Venus, and South Node are all in Aries. So it's a very Aries-based um, mindset. It's very hard to explain that fool energy to someone who doesn't naturally embody it. And now why do I bring this up right now? So this is one of those times where 
your ability to know when to do things and when to just even if you don't know not to do something you just won't do it you you can't seem to find the motivation this instinctual way of being has kept you pretty safe for the past couple of weeks but outside of that the past couple of weeks were just a time to sit tight there really was no other advice to give sit tight and be patient which is always the advice i mean i often say that the I Ching seems like iterations different versions of how to teach someone to be patient because it's all very strategic but under and, and very wise very wise but underneath it the the red thread through it is just cultivating patience and how patience is power basically so this high priestess energy here is you sitting and being patient in a way again that only an aries is patient you know it's does it read like patience that you won't do the thing you just won't do it and then all of a sudden you'll do it mm. so finally now in july it's time to act it's time to move romance is one of the sectors why well, romance is one of the areas of your life where as soon as you start moving, as soon as you start making any sort of an effort, that Venus in Leo is going to oppose Pluto in Aquarius. This is a sort of intensity that I think personally you've been craving. It's a little bit explosive. It can be a little bit jealous. It can bring out like the worst in you, but follow me here when I tell you that the worst in you is kind of like the best in you? Let me explain. So the moon traditionally is a card that now it has jumped out in the context of this Venus in Leo opposition to Pluto in Aquarius, okay? So that's what this is clarifying. So the moon... <laughs> is all your worst traits showing things that you just like genuinely don't want anyone to know that you don't want anyone to see you that way you don't even want to see yourself behave that way there are like you know parts of us that we're like oh my god i know i can be that way i hope nothing ever triggers me to go to that place again venus and leo <laughs> pluto and aquarius opposition is going to pull it out into the moonlight and you know mainly it's just intense it's jealous it can be bradily withdrawn at times but it's explosive good bad the other it's explosive so it'll be fun right but one of the flaws that will be highlighted i think the most for you is this idea of being possessive again let's talk about it so possession for aries is a very interesting concept as a cancer rising possessiveness is our bag we invented it and it's a whole other thing although both cardinal signs possessiveness in terms of cancerian energy is i you know i put you in my shell and you belong to me Aries possessiveness is very different. It's akin to you are in my army. You are loyal to me. When an Aries feels that someone's loyalty may be greater to someone else than them, even if it completely makes sense, it can kind of rub you the wrong way. Now, that in and of itself is not a big deal. With these Venus-Pluto oppositions going on, it can turn so ugly. The smallest character flaws can turn into these huge, glaring, 
you know, moments that your partner, your potential partner, the world on the internet sees and is like, oh, yeah, that person is... That person is trying to be crazy to get attention. It's worse than being called crazy. People right now, I feel, are trying to trigger you because they see you in a place, perhaps because you've been stressed. Um, they see you in a place where you are quite contemplative and your I need my alone time isolated energy is very powerful because it's this engine that's like just feeding itself like a feedback loop of energy you know it's just getting stronger and stronger it's keeping to itself but people if you've noticed when you're in this energy of keeping to yourself and you can actually feel your fire growing brighter people will come along to purposefully tap you and disturb this energy so they can tap some of that honey fire fire honey and take it with them and so this is one of those times where you would like nothing more than to keep to yourself, but romance is in the air, intense feelings are everywhere, people are coming on to you, people want to be around you. And you do feel a little bit like you're being pulled out of a nice space. You know, you got a good thing going for yourself. Things, things are, at least internally, you're finding calm. Well... July comes along and is like, no, I would like to piss you off because I feel like it's probably the easiest way to get your attention. And if you get pissed off, then I'm going to say you did it for attention. I'm doing it for attention. I'm going to piss you off so you'll be reactive and give me attention. But then when you do it, I'm going to say you wanted attention. Diabolic. Okay. Also, anyone who is ignoring you. If you feel like there's someone you're really interested in or they expressed a lot of interest in you and now all of a sudden you can't figure out where they went or what's going on, they're trying to play like a very unsuccessful uh, ghost you to bring you closer game with you and it's because they just don't understand your nature at all. Um, it's that I'm going to ignore them to make them like me more. It's a way to you know, cultivate a situation ship. Let's just be real. Cause, because if it was anything more serious than that, or if they cared and were more serious than that, then they would invest something in you, right? So if they're not... The way that I would like for you to look at it is that even though they're ignoring you, they're doing it because they want your attention and they want you sprung. But what I'm saying to you is that you're waiting on someone and should wait on someone who is walking into your life um, who would like to invest in you. And this is the standard. This is what we're waiting for. Not a king of pentacles, not a, you know, not a flashy knight of wands, not even a star, star card, and you know, charm going on no you want someone who sees the value and potential in you and wants to add to it and wants to be patient with you and wants to cultivate you out of love as the resource that you are because you are one of the few people who don't actually mind being used as a resource just as long as it's done respectfully and lovingly and within the borders of what you can bear and that's just not something people like. People would rather slit, you know, the throat of the golden goose, the goose that lays the golden eggs, instead of disrespecting the bitch, you know? Okay, all right, let's keep going. Sorry, tangent. Venus, Pluto, opposition. Okay, so... Everything that someone is doing that you're no longer with, no matter how they're acting, no matter what they have going on, anyone that you feel jilted by, anyone that you're thinking about, anyone who right now is not with you and you're like irritated by it, hurt by it, whatever you are about it, and you, but you know about it, like you're conscious of it, 
and they're putting on like this, oh my God, I'm having the time of my life. My lifestyle is amazing or this can't, I couldn't have more fun. It's all just a cry for help. They're miserable. So, so, so very upset. Would run, jump, trample if they could get back to you without having to swallow their pride. But, you know, that pride, <laughs> that pride. The interesting thing about Aries relationships, um, and they're not like a lot of interesting things. That Like, you guys are not that complicated, which is amazing. But the interesting thing about Aries relationships is that you often find that the person coming into the relationship begins with a pretty solid sense of their own power and it's only when they've been around an Aries for a little bit usually it doesn't take more than a few times of meeting them usually maybe I would say once um you realize that whatever power you thought you had or however masculine you thought you were however much gravitas you were hoping that you had <laughs> especially in social situations in person physically when you've been around an Aries for even a little while you begin to realize that your house was a house of cards <laughs> built on another house of cards everything everything starts to collapse about your sense of self in regards to power power is Aries's domain so when people first encounter you in a romantic way it can be really troubling for them. They have to redefine themselves in ways that I don't think people are comfortable doing, especially if they happen to identify as masculine. It's very difficult to share power. And Aries wouldn't know anything about sharing power. I don't think power is something that can be shared, actually. And Aries is well aware of this and doesn't share power. And you have to and you guys often say this, you have to just give it up to them um, or else the situation is not going to progress and then the Aries will leave anyway because no progression means stupidity and you guys aren't down with that. So towards the middle of the month, all this kind of cantankerous, weird, toxic, hoping to get you know reactivity out of you behavior, it, it, all of this calms down and then we have some very harmonious transits with Mars and Venus and we are feeling good. So by the time we get to the middle of July, you're feeling like just being romantic with your whole life. It does not matter if you're with someone or even like someone or even give a fuck about romance. You are frilly and cute and pretty and everything is just love centered it's romantic baroque even you find yourself wearing dresses for no reason if you do that kind of thing um you're just feeling really pretty and accepted by yourself and you you know if you've given yourself time by the time by the time everything moves into leo and gives you that fire back you're calm, you're collected, you're beautiful, you've been sleeping well, you're ready to venture back out. This is someone who has taken the time to do the work and make the plans and ready themselves in every way and now they stand on the precipice of discovering something new about themselves, about the world, about people. And it does feel that way, doesn't it? Regardless of where you've been romantically, regardless of how difficult it might have been, or how confusing it's been, or how dry it's been, I think you've been given a chance to work on your gentility, on how to allow and receive this past 12 months, let's say, has taught you just how strong you need to be and just how patient 
under great pain and pressure that you can be much more than I think you thought you could be. And I think surprisingly, you've realized that you're a lot more gentle and a lot of people around you have also realized that you're a lot more gentle than you come across. And even to people who've known you for a long time, they're perhaps noticing this softening of you. Now, all of this works perfectly with the energy of mid-July because mid-July becomes about seduction, romance, not just with people, but just with life. And you start to ask yourself, now we're getting kind of into career and money territory, you start to ask yourself questions about not just what you want to do with your life, but how do you want to feel? What feelings are you missing? What places have your eyes not seen that it doesn't make sense anymore that you haven't seen? What are those things that make you feel a certain way that you miss, that you haven't been cultivating, that you haven't been paying attention to, that you haven't been pursuing? How many different ways have you, in fact, neglected your own joy? Now, because this is what's going on in your head mid-month, your words become really explosive and very cutting and right on point, but too much. People feel, oh baby, they feel so fucking bad. They feel like you took something from them. It's so overwhelming. It's like you just, all of a sudden, you got a gun for, you know, for a mouth. Like you, the things you say are, they're so accurate. They're so right on, but they're so over the line especially with your family and friends, please watch your words because I would suggest take this energy and make something out of it. Do something really fulfilling. Maybe get yourself out of this fucking rut and, and, and use it to like write. Communicate it somehow. Make some art out of it. You know, like use it to fulfill something that's not being fulfilled that's keeping you feeling like, meh, you know, when an Aries is like, meh, it's like, meh, like really? What's going on? Why are you not fired up? Like what happened? Where, where, where have we missed the spark, misplaced the spark here? How do we go for these nine to ten? What is it? All that to you seems like wit, humor, good advice, just astute observations, all of that. Put it down on paper. Make some content about it. Make some art. Express yourself. Just don't target anybody with your talent. Create. Be that primer, primal, ever-living spark that you are. Let the fire of Leo season light you back up. So now, for those of you who are cross-watching and you're dealing with an Aries and you would like to know what's going on with them and why they're acting the way they're acting, this is a new segment. Welcome, cross-watchers. Okay, I think in a lot of ways, Leo season and every fire season to an Aries is much like their own season. They're reinvigorated and can seem at this time to be intensely self-centered and selfish. But I think for a lot of them, it's because they're tired and they don't know how to admit that they're tired. So they just think that they can keep doing what they always do and things will just somehow fall back into place. But burnout is a real thing. And I'm not saying Aries is burned out, but they're exhausted, you know? And they don't really know it. And that's their way of dealing with it. But you, as an outsider, as a person who may love them or want them, it is your job to know it. 
And if you want to be at all helpful to Aries right now, the way to love them is to care about them. Because when they are stressed or when they are moving fast, they forget to care about themselves. And it becomes very emotional for them. So if you want them to love you right now, it's the simple things that are going to make a difference. Did you eat? Is your laundry done? Are your bills paid? What do you need? Well, what about that stressful thing that happened? Did you talk to so-and-so? If you can be a real person, somebody who has enough to support yourself and to support somebody else going through a pretty major change, then go ahead and be as helpful as possible. And then just step back. Because as soon as you don't expect anything from an Aries, they want to give you everything. If you're there for them right now, even if they don't accept any of your help, if you're there for them right now and you don't ask for anything in return, you may gain perhaps not their intimate affections, but you may gain something much more valuable. And that would be their friendship. And unlike most signs, becoming friends with an Aries is an, it's a beautiful precursor to being with them. So you should want that. And you should be so lucky. Okay, I love you. We are going to look at these cards. We're going to do a preview um, so you can see the cards and see what we're going to be talking about in the extended. The links to access that video are below. There is Patreon single purchase just video if your country doesn't support Patreon subscriptions or Vimeo. There's also just Patreon subscriptions. And then there's Vimeo. And there's also a PayPal link where you can just buy the video and they send the link straight to you. And also there is a link below for personal readings, which has been very popular lately. So yeah, I think that's it. I love you. Let's look at these cards. Hi Aries, welcome to your extended preview. So let's talk a little bit more about just your words after the 20th and how very explosive things can get. Okay, sorry, there's a little bit of a shadow situation. And do not quote me, but I think it's thundering. The weather has been quite odd in New York. All right, so after the 20th, there's two things that are happening. One, you do very much feel the need to say the thing. And you know instinctively that your joy and happiness and health, very important here, health is in saying the thing, okay? But, If you've been biting your tongue, tongue, swallowing your anger, holding it in, you have to be honest with yourself about how explosive you really feel right now. How much you've had to bear. So I don't think, I think you would be surprised yourself at how much you've had to swallow your pride. And now after the 20th, this is about something specific. Somewhere, where, some area of your life where you feel like you got backed into a corner and you don't appreciate it. And at the time, for whatever reason, you were in a tight spot and you couldn't say anything. After the 20th, whatever that is, is gonna come back up. You can be bold 
in speaking about it, or you could be very slow and steady. I would suggest you be slow and steady about it because the truth is, whomever you're trying to, you know, get your point across to, whomever you're trying to explain this to, whomever you're trying to make understand how you feel, they don't care. They're pretending to care, but they're doing that thing that people do with you where they're not really listening because they think you're just being dramatic. They're not really listening to, to the content of what you're saying because they're just assuming that this is you being worked up if you're explosive. So this is a time for you to be, there's a card turned over in here. This is a time to be very calculated. I was just laughing to myself about how every time Aquarians feel jilted by me, and I don't mean like on the channel, but also the channel, but just personally, they always send me like a paragraph long text or DM. They think it out. They have a lot to say. They organize their thoughts. Please. You do the same. Excuse me, I was chewing ice. Use that raw power, intellect, very fast. Feeling like a winner, looking like a wow. Use that power slowly. Use that power and channel that power, channel that fire into your intellect. Don't let this be about your ego, especially because you're the one who has a point. You're in the right. Don't make yourself wrong. Does that make sense? I hope so, and I love you. And we're going to get into career and money now. And that will be the rest of the extended. See you there.